Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first in a series of new live stream shows from Car Design News. I'm Mike Nash, the Deputy Editor of CDN, and today I'm delighted to be joined by three of the industry's top car designers. <clears throat> but before I introduce them, I want to provide a little bit of context. So the idea behind this live stream is to open up lines of communication that would otherwise be closed. We want to hear from people from all over the world who already work in the car design, who are hoping to work in car design in the future, and most of all, who are passionate about car design. Together, we will discuss the challenges and issues facing the industry, and if we're lucky, perhaps talk a little bit about some of the progress that is being made. So at the moment, the automotive industry, just like every other, every other industry, is coping with coronavirus. We would like to kick things off by asking everyone here about their experience. So you should see a poll question pop up on your screen now. The question is, how well has your company been able to carry forward design on new model programs while working remotely? So if you could please just choose one answer, A, B or C or D, um, and then we can get a bit of an insight on that. So while we wait, for the poll i'll quickly run through some of the general housekeeping um so if you have any questions for our panel of experts please ask them in the q a box on the right hand side of your screen and uh, we'll try and address as many of those as we can throughout the session uh, and if you have any technical issues you can write them in that q a box and our team will try and help also uh, if any of your colleagues haven't been able to join us today uh, the live stream will be available online afterwards. Um, so let's take a quick look at this poll if we can. Um, so the question again was how well has your company been able to carry forward design on new model programs while working remotely? 9% uh, of you said very effectively uh, with little or no disruption. 50% said most mostly effective. Some tasks were, have been interrupted. 33% uh, said somewhat effectively. Key critical tasks interrupted. And 7% said very ineffectively. Uh, many critical tasks interrupted. So the majority, around 50%, said you've been pretty effective. Um, and that's quite interesting. I think uh, we've done a, a bit of a uh, of a series on car design news recently talking to some companies about how they're coping with coronavirus uh how they're dealing with that and how many of their processes have been affected um during during the period and uh there was one uh key theme that was consistently raised and that was uh how difficult it was to do the clay model inside of things um so perhaps most most areas of design um, are continuing, but certain areas like clay modeling, you need to be in that physical space. Uh, so perhaps that's what we're seeing there. Um, so anyway, most of us, at least in Europe and the US, are still in lockdown mode. Uh, but three people we have on the call today have come out the other side. They're based in areas of the world that have lift, lifted lockdown and have already returned to their design studios. So we're hoping that they can shed some light on how they have been coping with the situation and what it's like being back in the studio. So I'm joined by Guy Burgoyne, who is Vice President of Design at Geely, Xiaojing Fen, the Vice President of Design at SAIC, and Simon Lowsby, who is Head of Hyundai Styling Group at Hyundai Design Center in Korea. Thank you so much, guys, for joining me. Pleasure. Good to see you. Awesome. Uh, so uh, it's quite cool seeing everyone in their in their setups. It's a bit weird for me because uh, I haven't seen uh, people in public places like this at work for a long time. Um, but it's uh, it's pretty cool. Um, so I think just to give a, a little bit more uh, context for this live stream, guys, if we could kind of get an insight as to where you all are at the moment. So. We have people listening from all over the world, and some of them, um, you know, could could not uh, yet know whereabouts you're exactly based. So, um, shout 
I think you're somewhere in Shanghai. If you could, uh, if you could describe exactly where you are in Shanghai, that would be pretty cool. Where your studio is. Yeah. Uh, I'm, my name is Sao Nifeng. I come from uh, SAC Design Center. I'm in charge of two brands, Rui and MG. Now I'm working in Shanghai. Uh, currently, it's city. city uh. So in the last uh, two months, we slowly to work, come to work. And then we, we know it's uh, a big crisis in, in our country, or now in uh, all the world. So it's really hard time in in that time, but uh, now it's for us. Everything is, is okay. We're going to normal, and uh, yeah, interesting. Uh, going back to normal, I can't quite imagine that yet. Um, what about you, Guy? We're about to see you. Yeah, I'm also in Shanghai. I'm um, quite central Shanghai, uh, inside the Middle Ring Road, uh, near the South Train Station for anyone that knows where that is. Um, I've been back to work for already about eight, nearly eight weeks now. Uh, very fortunate with my timing of travel over the Chinese New Year. Uh, I left a week early, which made it easy to leave. Uh, I had a birthday to celebrate with family in Australia. And uh, I managed to take a business trip to England before things really um, uh, unfortunately transferred over there. And I managed to come back to China just before lockdowns and other procedures came into place. Cool. A uh, little bit of travel before <laughs> before you had to uh, shut down. Then that's quite nice. And and you, Simon, you look like you're uh, in an amazing setting right now. Yeah, uh, it is quite amazing. I'm I'm in the studio in Namyang in uh, South Korea. It's our main studio of all of our studios worldwide. We're about sort of 40 minutes with good traffic south of Seoul, southwest of Seoul. Um, we have the whole R&D center here, so this is where I spend most of my time, and, and more recently, all of my time. Um, we used to travel around a lot to events, a lot of launch events around the world, but that's all been canceled the last three months, basically. I think probably Korea was the only country that never shut down. Uh, I think we've been incredibly lucky how the government has managed to uh, look after the country in a, in a way which has only been possible here. So we've never had a full shutdown. Uh, we've had some part-time work for two weeks um, where we didn't overlap the teams. We had 50% who were here, 50% were away, just the distance somewhat. But the whole country distanced uh, very carefully, but nothing shut down. So I was actually in contact with Guy whilst I was away saying, how are you and where are you? And he was in Australia and I was uh, in Canada. And uh, yeah, so I've been back in the studio. I've been in the studio the whole time, actually. We've watched the wave hit our other studios and watched how the situation has changed and how we've had to shift our workload between studios. Um, uh, the, the, the unfortunate consequence is that I've not been home for 14 weeks now. So, so I'm, I'm sort of stuck here because I live quite close to Xiao and Guy in China still, but travel out here a lot. So I've been stuck here for 14 weeks now. Um, it's the first time I've not been on an aeroplane for 14 weeks, probably since I was about 15 years old. So yeah, it's quite quite refreshing, really. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's a bit uh, uh, yeah wow. Um, so I guess guys, uh, everyone at the moment is sort of looking towards you guys uh, in in China and Korea, um, sort of looking at how we can learn from you guys at the moment, um, in, especially in Europe, we're, we're a few weeks behind in terms of situation and the US as well. So, you know, a lot of a lot of the studios here, they're still in lockdown, they're still empty. Uh, so designers are working from home. Um, so I guess uh, this probably relates uh, more to you, Guy, and, and Xiao. Um, but if you could perhaps give some uh, some insight into what design departments kind of need to do or prepare um, to cope with with the impact of of working from home, and then also to like kind of prepare when when their studios do reopen, um, you know, what are the best things to kind of think about um, going back into that studio setting. 
Mr. Shao, after you. Oh, I can try and answer if you can hear me. Um, yeah, we've, we've had, uh, we had about two weeks after the extended Chinese New Year, we had about two weeks of working from home. Uh, we, were, we went back to the office um, for a small number of people in the beginning of March. The, those people that really needed to be in the studio, we, we prioritized and those that could stay working from home, we let them continue that way as, uh, to, for safety reasons, for keeping distance and minimizing the number of people gathering. Um, we, we started with uh, temperatures being taken to come into work, temperatures being taken again in the afternoon, and a general cleaning of uh, disinfecting, if you like, of the whole studio twice a day. Sounds extreme, doesn't it? But it was, it was pretty easy to cope with. Um, we, we were kind of used to virtual reviews. Uh, before the, there was a, a virus, um, we were having uh, virtual reviews with our global network of studios. So uh, California, Barcelona, uh, Sweden, uh, Coventry, uh, Hethel, uh, Proton, uh, and we've got a number of three studios in China. Um, so we were used to having virtual presentations, uh, seeing our CEO as an avatar, and um, quite tempting actually having a laser pointer in the virtual world with your CEO sometimes, um, but it's only a pointer. Um, and we would uh, we were we were quite used to this system. What's really changed is that when we the provinces, especially in China, kind of got locked down for good reasons. Um, we realized that we should set up um, more uh, of these virtual environments. We call them space stations. We have uh, Space Station Hangzhou, that's our headquarters. Uh, we have Space Station Hangzhou Bay, where engineering is now as well. We've added these to our Space Station Gothenburg, Space Station Coventry. And um, we, we connect um, directly to the CEO. We've trained a couple of his assistants to be able to use the system so we don't have to travel there even. So um, that's the bit that's accelerated in the last three months for us. Um, we were already doing quite, a, quite extensive virtual side, uh, but we're also doing extensive clay and physical, which is the bit that's kind of suffered a little bit. So the balance has kind of shifted between the, the tools being used by the nature of the situation. Okay, cool, fantastic. Shao, are you back with us now? Uh, I think you think you might be experiencing some technical issues. Yeah, you're back. Cool, amazing. Um, so I just I put the question to you again, Shao. Um, I was just wondering what it's been like going back uh, into the studio after after being on lockdown. Um, could you talk me through the the process of going back to the design studio? <laughs> Because our studio closed uh, more than two weeks. Then uh, we were allowed to uh, come to work. But at the beginning, not 100% people can, can work. And uh, I remember first week, only management can, can, can work. You know, at the time, so uh, everything just uh, locked down. And we can't do start more project. And we just think about how to do the project. And at that time, our uh, IT department developed a special software for all of us. And we use the software can do more communication with these others and uh, step by step. The second week, so we maybe 30% can work. But I feel this is a big problem for the project. Is, uh, you know, SOP can't be delayed. And uh, if we can't deliver it, on time, so in the future, we still get big problems. That make the decision, we try to divide the whole team to A and B, shift. So we work the daytime and the night time. For example, the daytime is from eight o'clock to maybe uh, four o'clock. Another team from the three o'clock yeah. to, to, to 10. So very difficult for a second team because most will work in the, in the night, but no choice, we must start like this. So that means when, uh, after one month, we already deliver all the data on time, like normal data. So I think this really, really 
uh, good decision for, for us. If no this decision is difficult to, uh, to keep uh, the right process. And also our company, you know, SAC Wuling, they deliver uh, the mask for all the SAC uh, employees. They change uh, the, the, the car, car line to make uh, the mask. It's really crazy. I can show you yeah? like this. It's uh, our company, SAC, SAC build the mask. So that means that everything can support the way safety work. Yeah, you all have the same lot of <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so uh, I, I I feel this we gotta be and also we have special software. And you know the, the, the teams step by step get the Thank you guy. <laughs> okay, now I think uh, everything already come to normal. And I can introduce the special uh, software we call Little B, Stack Little B. Okay. Hey, cool. Uh, yeah. So it's it's very uh, interesting seeing car makers kind of uh, get used to the idea and and adapt to the idea of making making masks. Um, and Guy, you were talking about, uh, before you were talking about uh, GD uh, releasing the car with some um, clever air um, filtration tech as well. So do you want to talk us through that? Yeah, um, it was actually just, ironically, it was launched yesterday. That's just a happy <laughs> coincidence with this, uh, this conference. Um, so it was uh, our Icon car. We've released a version called Icon Plus. That also features, um, apart from the filters in the air conditioning, we also have some antibacterial materials in it. So, for example, the steering wheel uh, contains um, certain um, healthy chemicals in the uh, material of the steering wheel. So, it literally will kill bacteria for uh, a quite an extended period, uh, just by just by itself, with no extra uh, feature added. So. Um, very normal thing in China. We're very quick to react to uh, market needs. So, yeah. Yeah, it's really fascinating. Um, so, guys, I guess uh, one of the one of the topics that has been um, kind of quite poignant as well is that when when uh, people have been working remotely in the design world. They've been turning towards uh, VR, more usage of VR, uh, more usage of dig digital tools, um, and then, uh, like I, I alluded to after the poll, um, perhaps the um, clay modeling is something that you can only do within the studio. Um, so I just wondered if during during this period at the moment when your colleagues in in europe and north america are perhaps uh only able to work on vr are you kind of helping out um on like the clay side or or size potentially in design that they can't work on at the moment uh being when whilst they're working remotely and um, perhaps you could you could talk a little bit about that simon yeah i mean it's um We've had to change the way we structured our work around the world. Uh, we've been lucky the main studio has never been closed, but we could see the wave coming towards India, Japan, China, uh, or from China, but then into Europe and, and America. So we, we, we've had to very quickly change the responsibilities in each project, uh, where we've taken on the responsibility of all physical modeling is now in Korea, because the wave's gone past. So the teams uh, in California, in uh, India, in Europe, they're totally decentralized, working from home, uh, feeding data to us. We're milling it here, reviewing it, giving them feedback, and they're reworking the virtual data, exactly as we would actually do in their studios normally. Um, we're heavily digital. In our process, we're so heavily digital that there's actually very little sort of explorative handwork in the clay anyway. Uh, and so it, it's very mill it, look at it, move it a bit, redo it in CAD, remill it, and it, it, the, the, the process is driven by data rather than driven by clay. And so having had that process anyway for the last couple of years as a real focus, we've been very lucky that we can quickly adapt to the situation now. 
Um, having said that, the most important people thing in the system is to look after our people. We've had and we had teams who are scared, and I'm sure guys have the same issue. Where we we here in in Asia have been past it. Uh, we've been past the wave, and we've seen what's coming. And we've got people in in California and Europe who are, oh my God, what's hitting us now? And and we've been there, we've done it. We've we can you know we can recommend how many times the studio sanitized. Uh, hearing guys say about cleaning the studio a couple of times a day, we do the same thing here. The cleaners go around and clean all the door handles, especially a couple of times a day. People are wearing masks all the time for any meetings, indoor, outdoor. I'm amazed in Europe they're still debating wearing masks. Um, I can't, it's shocking, um, but but it's all about, for us, it's been the most critical thing has been working together with our IT department, working together with the HR department, as Sha was mentioning about making sure people can work decentralized with the right software, with the right tools. Um, so we've got our teams, I mean, Guy was talking about virtual reviews. I, I had a review last, what was it, Friday, a couple of days ago, where one guy's at home in LA, another guy's at home in Laguna Beach. I'm in the studio here. They're at home and we're, we're standing in the virtual environment, laser pointing, walking around full size models. Um, it's, it's actually really easy if we trust our people and we trust the technology and we make it happen. We have the belief in the, in the system. This is the great opportunity to make it happen now. And so we've absorbed the clay modeling work here um, and, and really focused the external studios on full on to the virtual work data feasibility work, we mill it here, give them feedback. Yeah, that's really interesting. Would you would you tend to agree, Shao, that uh, you know this is kind of an opportunity to for the design world to to use the tools that you have and and to really put your trust in in those tools uh, and to make sure that things progress um, as quickly as possible. Can you hear me? No, perhaps not. Uh, maybe Guy, you can you can address that question. I just missed it. Can you repeat the question? Sorry. Yeah, of course. I was just uh, I was just talking about what Simon alluded to. I was wondering if you agree with with the fact that perhaps. Uh, you know, the now is the time really to show what what design can do um, in in terms of using the tools that we already have um, to see how fast we can progress. Uh, we've lost your we've lost your uh, <laughs> microphone now, guy, as well. Uh, Shout, are you there? I'm still here. Simon, okay. Yes, thank you. Can you hear me? <laughs> I can hear you. Uh, unfortunately, Guy and Shao, you're 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 both uh, disconnected with your with your microphone. So um, maybe try uh, coming going out and rejoining the session. Um, perhaps your microphones will work. Um, but yeah, Simon, okay. Uh, <laughs> so it's so, me. Oh, you're losing everybody fast. Um, they'll be yeah. back. Yeah, for us. Um, for me, for design, I think we're naturally a, a department. In, we are naturally that group who are disrupting anyway. Our job is to disrupt. Our job is to disrupt not only design, but content, but process too. And this is one of those opportunities for us to really flex the muscles of innovation of our process, um, which, which has been such a great opportunity to, to harness the, the need and, and try things differently and try to decentralize and give us the opportunity for later that it's easy that the technology does work and it does make it fast. And we, I'm communicating way more now with our California studio, our European studio, our other studios because of the need, because we can't fly. I'm just, I'm way more in contact than ever before, actually, with those studios, which I, I didn't expect. But I, I, I mean, this call now, I was just on a couple of calls to Europe, uh, people at their homes working on stuff before this. Yeah, we, we are the innovative bunch, it should be anyway. We can help our IT guys know what we need, help our HR understand. We we need to trust our people that they can do this it's decentralized. And this has been a great opportunity to prove it. Uh, so as Sha was saying earlier, we've not dropped a deadline, not dropped a presentation. We've not affected an SOP yet. 
Um, and that's that's our job is to squeeze the process to make sure we support the project still um, wherever we can in the world. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, Guy, are you back with us? Uh, I hope so. Yes, you can are. Can you hear me? <laughs> Great. We can hear you. I'm, I'm convinced Simon's controlling the uh, the mute. Yeah, I think that's the calls. Yeah, what about you? Can we hear you yet? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, okay, fantastic. So, um, just a, a quick question for you. Um, do you think that uh, that now is the time for design to really push forward and to, to show what you can do with with your tools that you currently have? Ah, uh, yes. So, sometimes we think uh, uh, working in home is a disaster, but sometimes it's really good for, for designers to, because no boss can tell you, do everything you want, just the, but you must give feedback to the boss what you they already give to your, your task. But uh, during that time, really really hard time, but uh, the designer is, is thinking about how and what they can do something. And they, I ask the team to uh, build a lot of cartoon pictures, photos, and also posters. And then we, we publish this and also gave to a lot of people, you know, the confidence. And I, I really like this time we think about how to transfer our designer thinking to, to the normal uh, customers. I think um, it's really how to say positive feedback from the internet. You know? And also uh, I got some, some, somebody, uh, the information from somebody from the internet. They, they said, thank you design teams. You gave us some, some really good suggestions from the cartoon pictures. And also I can show you some, something that is um, really, really easy to understand. We, we, this is a really good job because of our designers. And also through this uh, uh, hard time and people feel, it's, you know, sometimes we can't work and but we can do another thing to support the research. So, so, and also the companies, and uh, everybody can feel confidence. I, I think it's very, very important because at that time, every day we heard so many big issues, big news. We need uh, the confidence. So our design team did a lot of things to do this. I'm already proud of them. Yeah, amazing. And, and to you, Guy, uh, I guess, one one of the things that Simon alluded to there was um, how uh, he was uh, communicating perhaps with teams in all over the world more so than he maybe have been doing before. So, um, have you seen? Have you? Uh, is that been the case for you guys as well? Um, and you know, are you uh, are you fed up with the the, the video calls yet? <laughs> the. Uh... Yeah, we, we have a, a bunch of leaders which are, are very good friends and uh, like I guess most teams would hopefully be. And uh, every literally every time we get on a conference call together, it takes at least 10 minutes at least before we can actually get to any agenda item. <laughs> because just like a bunch, you know, it, and I've seen exactly the same behaviours with my children having online learning at home. Adults and children exactly the same. We go on to these, get a crowd of people on the video call, and they all have to do the silly immature faces and wave, and and they just we're all the same. Even the um, older grey-haired ones. I, I would, um, I would never I'm not do that. Of it I would all. never do that, guy. <laughs> <laughs> See. See, I was <laughs> so um, yeah. It, it, How many do you work in? Are you, are you not serious? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You've got to enjoy work. I think creativity yeah. comes out of uh, um, a love for um, exploring things and being daring to do things. And um, yeah, if you're around a bunch of people that are like-minded, it usually means you can be open with each other and therefore you can uh, make fun of each other in a good way. And I, I believe that a lot of creativity comes out of that. So um, yeah, we have a lot of fun with it, to be honest. Um, and then we get down to the serious stuff and actually discuss <laughs> uh, business matters and d d design direction. Yeah. Well, I was I, going to say I, that I, you've I, all been yeah, pretty I, well I, behaved so far. 
Um, but there we go. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to come. It's going to come. Something, it's gonna come. Mike, something we found, which which we didn't do before, um, we would have our, our uh, senior designers flying around the world to big presentations with physical models coming over here and so on. But what what we've had to do now is everybody's decentralized. What it's given us the chance to do is that in every in big virtual reviews, we, we've got the whole team there on another screen, and each of the individual designers in their homes, sometimes in California at sort of you know, one o'clock in the morning, because they want to be part of it. And, and you've got everybody at home over there on the screens watching what's happening, watching the review being part of it. But we've never done that before. We, we're kind of getting more connected. And, and the team in, in Nam Yang, doesn't necessarily know all the individual designers in Europe or China or India and now they're getting a face to the name to the sketch they've seen to the work and it's becoming much more familiar than it ever was before um, we could still do it more but it, it's really nice to have that banter uh, as Guy mentions and it's like oh you're the face behind that sketch and you know you know those guys it really makes a difference it's really you, you can grow together actually as a, as a global team through this and especially now that our teams here are delivering the proposals from other studios so it's a it's a level of responsibility like when you become a senior designer and you take younger designers work forward our namyang team is taking the designs forward of, of the other teams now because the other teams simply can't do that in in physical modeling and so it's it's it's, it's made us rethink about our process to become more flexible and to be more grown up as as one team globally rather than individual teams in so much competition. Yeah, perhaps you would like to comment on that show as well. Yeah. So we also have a, a design studio in the in the other side in, in London and the headquarters in Shanghai. So before we we only Communication by computer, by email, and uh, to be honest, the field uh, communication in you know video conference. And then during that time, we, we did a lot of video conference, just like you said, like some 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 of you mentioned. It, yes, it's a really really good time to know each other. And um, but uh, when we know this crisis is really really dangerous for for everybody. And when we heard in London, we will get a problem with we lock down the, the UK studio. So then the British designer all go home, that's working in home. And every, every morning, uh, the design director of London studio, uh, Mr. Carl Gosen, will give a task to everybody, our designers. And in the evening, they will collect all the proposals and scares. And it's Friday, we will discuss by video conference the, the, all the proposals. And also, I asked my colleague to send a lot of masks to Carl Gosen yeah, to support their working in home. Yes, it's a really hard time because the UK design team still not not work in, in, in the studio. They still work in home. But uh, we are a good example for them. They, they also learn how to uh, efficiently work in the home. It's, it's, uh, I feel they are not lose the, the confidence. I, I think it's also a good team. And we hope everything can go to normal. Also, uh, the UK team can come to the studio soon. Yeah, OK, fantastic. Um, one, of, one of the points that I kind of wanted to pick up on as well, guys, is um, perhaps the relationship that you might have uh, between not just your other design teams based all over the world, but other other members of your team, other other um, parts of your team. So, for example, your relationship with engineering um, has that been impacted by by your working situation? Have you had more more contact with uh, engineering or IT or anyone like that? And um, perhaps you could answer that, Simon. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we've really had to build, especially from from the, the main studio here in, in Namyang, contacts with our IT and HR teams around the world more strongly. We, we, we never had a strong link to our HR and IT in, in America or in Europe before, but we, we've got into conversation with those guys to, to give them the, the support and the, and the encouragement that it's okay. We, we, we're okay to decentralize equipment. 
don't worry about that. The cost of, of decentralizing a computer to somebody's home and VR kit is very, very little compared to missing an SOP. And so, you know, give them the confidence that it's okay. We've sorted the system out. Our guys here are doing it as well. So the main, usually when a main studio has found a solution, it really helps the remote regions to be able to take that on as well. So we'd be very proactive and, yeah, probably pushed our colleagues and other departments rather hard around the world to, to make sure that happens. And, uh, and now to be able to have VR reviews with people, with our, our team members who are at home in the lounge, um, but in a VR world, we're, we're in PlayStation world together, um, looking at full-size models, whether it's exterior or interior. And that's, that, that's been a big help from our IT teams, the flexibility, having the right software, having the right connection, data connection between the studios. And I'm calling a studio somebody's home. You know, so, so these are the studios all over the place. We have more studios than we ever had. So in particular, the relationship to, to the, those departments has been strengthened uh, like never before. Our R&D guys, we're, we're just still in the same connection. We're still working on packages as we did before, really. Uh, but the external departments, that's been a, that's a, been a big step and a really important step as well. Um, just because it, it just shows we trust our people and our teams realize we trust them. And it's okay. You know, you've got the equipment at home. We trust you. you you've got the, the data there. You've got the software there. Yeah, and when it comes back, we gradually migrate everything back into the studio. Um, and we hope there are the same number of computers as we had before. <laughs> and, uh, and with you, Guy, have you, have you seen uh, sort of more collaboration between other departments like engineering and IT? Yeah, I think we, we've, we've obviously placed... Um, a VR set that's for use for all of the leadership, all the project leadership in the big engineering center we have in uh, towards Ningbo in Hangzhou Bay. Um, so that helps us to be able to communicate directly with those people on a daily basis without the need for a three or four hour uh, card journey. Um, a bit like Simon said earlier about being closer to people, we now realize um, we now get to meet people's children uh, because they're being homeschooled and meet exactly. their pets. Right. Just, yeah. at, just at the moment when there's something really serious to talk about, then the dog barks <laughs> or um, the, ch the child comes past and uh, yeah, it's kind of, um, yeah, it's very human and I think it's quite nice myself. So. Hey, I, I, like, Guy, you probably have the same thing where you, you, you understand why people's desks are so untidy because you see what's behind them at home in the video conference. It's like, guys, come on, tidy up, look at the background there. Um, but it is nice, you get an insight into people's lives, you get welcomed into people's homes effectively. Uh, that's, that's pretty, and a, a number of the team, I mean, we, they'll, they'll just walk around the house and, and say, look, this is where I live. And look, here's the garden. And it's, it's really nice. It's just, it's just you, you, you strengthen that connection, which you would never do before. Yeah, for sure. It's really interesting. I think, uh, I think as well, a lot of uh, parents are realizing that uh, teachers need medals at the moment. Uh, yes. so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, when they're trying to homeschool. Um, so I guess uh, one of the more sort of crystal ball gazy type questions I wanted to ask um, was to do with actually maybe the impact that uh, the current situation is having in, on or might have on the future of car design. Um, so Simon, I think uh, you're, you're the only one with us at the moment, so perhaps you can uh, address this first. So, um maybe specifically in areas of design do you think that we're now going to start looking perhaps more uh, 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 more things that i was on about with the with the ge icon the the standardization and and the ear, ear filtration systems um do you think that the current situation might actually change the way that um we're looking at car design in general i think um It'll, it's, it's, it's most definitely helped us realize how, how we can decentralize more, how we can, uh, how that we can, we can work from all over the place and change our, in, in, be flexible in our organization and we can keep the deadlines and we can change radically how we physically sit. But it means the, the tools that we have, we, we realize we're not exploiting them enough. We're not exploiting the, the digital process enough. We, there's a lot more space there for us to exploit it. And all the digital tools that 
you know, we wow, we can really exploit this more than before. So it should make us look in the mirror. And say, okay, are we doing enough? Are we flexible enough, fast enough? Do we do we utilize the tools well enough before we get into the physical modeling stage in particular? Um, and that's something that, that yeah, that that's really a, a, an encouragement to us that you know you once you put in the situations, probably we'll not go back from this now, we'll just keep building on it. So did you uh, did you get that question? So I, I basically wanted to to know if you think that the the current situation might change the way that you look at um, future design of, of vehicles. Is that to Mr. Shao? Yeah, you with us, Shao? Not sure you can hear us. So, Guy, maybe maybe you can uh, address that question. Yeah. Yeah, I've I've heard a few people say that. Um, All right, I can't a, see you. I'll go for it. The, uh, I've heard a few people say that there's maybe a chance that there's a increase in the desirability of you know, private personal transportation in terms of uh, social distancing. That maybe the uh, public transport, which of course in mega cities like Shanghai is, uh, you know, is is the opposite of social distancing. Um, so I think there's a, there's a big possibility that um, there's some kind of um, you know, a reaction to that in in a, a way, which could be positive for those car design studios. Um, but we we all see ourselves more as mobility art solutions these days. So I think the um, whether it's an Uber or a DD or a Chow Chow, uh, these kind of uh, ride sharing options, I think they also can be affected. People will probably want more guarantee that they're getting into a a, a clean environment, a healthy environment. Um, I think there's many ways in which this can affect us all. Um, I think that whole thing about, you know, I think the biggest thing I've seen is people taking such care with um, hand sanitizing, what they touch, and uh, how they pass on their own germs. There you go. Simon's lube, he's always got that handy. And um, yeah, the, yeah, I think there's... Um, it's a daytime show. Okay, sorry, I forgot. Um, I need it back anyway. The, um, yeah, I think this, these are the ways in which it provides uh, new challenges for us in design, new, new things to solve. Yeah, and uh, Shao, if you're there, um, what do you think about, you know, uh, trends that have been ongoing? Uh, so in, in public transport, we have, you know, uh, ride, ride hailing and um, car sharing, uh, things like this. Uh, do you think that the current situation might change the way that uh, we're looking at these vehicles, uh, these mobility solutions going forward? No, perhaps not from shout. Simon, what do you think? Um, yeah, I think um, it's something that, that I mean, Guy mentioned as well. He's absolutely right. The the how we treat, especially car sharing, it, it gives us real wake up call and, and a clean environment and how we affect that from a design perspective, a technical perspective as well. Um, you know, I'm, I've got a mask here which has got a special copper filament in it, and copper is known to kill bacteria and viruses. So the kind of surface treatments become very important. Um, I think it's interesting that generally Asia was much more focused on this this sort of clean, sanitized environment. Probably Korea, most extreme, even more than China. Um, but having had uh, SARS in China and in Asia in 2003, I think that was one of the kicks into into personal transportation. That people wanted their own unique vehicle. Uh, something that, that the guy mentioned as well. I think that, that that's something that the sanitizing, the clean, the, the personal transportation, that, that might affect Europe and America in a similar way as it's already affected China and, and, and Korea. Um, certainly Korea, it, we, it's a very health, clean, hygiene conscious place. Uh, I mean, for those, I mean, Xiao and, and Guy as well, I'm sure you've got air purifiers at home, air filtration at home. like. Like, like I do here, but there's something in Europe and in, in, in America is probably way less so. And I, I can imagine in terms of how that affects people's lifestyles in Europe, uh, may well affect Europe and America more than it has done us because we've already been doing that quite a bit. Oh, I'm 
I've lost Mike now. I can't hear Mike. Try again, Mike. Uh, we lost the count, Mike. Me? Yeah, we can now. Okay. Okay, there we go. Um, Sarah, can you hear me? Uh, perhaps, perhaps we can't still get Shire. Um, Guy, are yes. you there? Yeah, you're there. Uh, we can't quite hear you, I don't think. Um, Turn your microphone on, Guy. I can't hear you. Safety mask. Safety mask. Ah, Shire's there. Shire's yeah. there, I think. Um, Shao, if you can hear, we're just wondering what you think about um, the the way that the current situation might have had an impact on um, mobility solutions uh, such as car sharing. Uh, do you think that do you think that the situation has had an impact? I, I think really negative for this car sharing business, really really disaster for them because people don't want to buy. Uh, take uh, the bus, a DD and taxi and some something because they really worry about to take the coronavirus if they take this kind of uh, transportation. So yeah, it's, it's good for, for us. We can sell more cars for them. Yeah, more more people can, can buy the private cars. It's really good. But to be honest, uh, there are a lot of students in the university, they think about the, 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 the too many ideas for selling cars. Now it's a big problem for all students now, you know? even even for designers, we get a, a lot of job, a lot of task to think about how to do certain cars in Shanghai. Now maybe we need to stop now because we don't know the, the when we can, everybody can easy and also feel safety to take this kind of bus and taxi. You know? Okay, fantastic, cool. So um, I just think that you know we've I, I think we've come across a, a lot of different topics um, over the past 40 50 minutes um, but I want to kind of just round up with with a, a bit of a an interesting look at um, what you guys are currently up to and perhaps any any insights that you can give further insights into um, your colleagues in in America and in Europe um, perhaps we could just start, though, um, Guy, if you're there and if um, if we can hear you. Uh, <laughs> um, perhaps we could start with an insight on your to-do list. Um, I imagine that coming back to the studio and uh, you know getting getting things done at the moment, it's it's been a bit tricky. So, is your to-do list uh, longer than it's ever been? And and could you share some insight into that? Um. If, if, um, first of all, can you hear me? Yes, we got. It. Okay. Um, my to-do list. Um, I'm not very good at to-do lists, to be very honest with you. So, um, um, I I'm juggling many things at the same time, but that's been the same case for the last um, uh, seven years of being uh, with Geely. So it's the it's for me. It's back to the same crazy it was before. Um, <laughs> So it's a nice crazy. I'm quite happy with the um, how busy and how many different tasks we get at the same time in this company. Uh, I'm a very greedy designer. I like to have lots of things to do and uh, lots of toys to play with. Um, my my to-do list when I came back though after this um, the virus had kind of was still coming through here to be honest. Um, if it was advice to my colleagues in uh, America and Europe. Um, I would say it's to you know to make sure that you uh, apportion your day when you're working from home. Make sure you've got um, a list of who you want to make contact with. Obviously, consider the time differences. And um, you know, it to me, creative designers shouldn't. You know, the worst thing possible, and I kind of ban it, is uh, designers sitting in the same seat every day at work for years on end. So we more, try and right? we we. This has been a change of environment, and um, to me, it's just like a lovely bit of inspiration. I don't want it to continue that we have to do it yeah. for any of our studios because I still value the coming together, the um, the banter, the creative banter that happens around a physical um, interaction. I think that's a human thing. We do have uh, some designers that don't mind, that almost relish to be a bit more on their own occasionally. 
and we provide a studio that lets them do that when they need to with little breakout zones of course but um, I would feel very sad if we um, we become a completely virtual thing um, you know it'll be less uh, reason for actual transportation and uh, transportation brings people together uh, it moves people around I think that's really vital otherwise ironically our, our job will stop so <laughs> the, uh, we need to be we need to be a bit careful with what we say about this um, <laughs> Yeah, you know, we need people to need to be together. Um, if that doesn't sound too hippie-ish, uh, I like it. I like to get together with interesting people, and I like my environment to change regularly because it inspires in different ways. Yeah, fantastic. Shao, perhaps you could uh, weigh in there. Uh, so, so Shao, if, if uh, you could tell us a little bit about your current to-do list um, and what sort of uh, what what things you might have perhaps learnt from uh, the crisis as well, uh, and and how you uh, what you would uh, talk, what would you what you would suggest uh, to your North American colleagues and and European colleagues um, to be aware of. Sorry, sorry, it's really difficult to hear clearly from you. Uh, no problem. Um, so I just wondered if you could talk us through your list of things that you have at the moment that you need to need to do. Uh, I imagine with the current situation, uh, you have a lot on your plate. Um, so is is do you have lots of things that you need to get through? Uh, yes, because uh, in, in Shanghai, everything is already going to a normal day, you know? and uh, yeah, every day I, I get get a really big pressure from my president. They try to put our design team to deliver more creative works for them, and also we have a lot of new projects we're going to marketing, and we did a lot of uh, support to uh, launch show and also we hope uh, it's all new product can be uh, successful in the marketing. So in these days we we are well, normal day you now we're working in, like before and we try to communicate with the customers and also we connect with a lot of uh, uh, designers who is my friend we can cooperate in the future and also I did a lot of job with the universities, you know, and uh, we start again for the design award this year. And also, I also communicate a lot of uh, details with the students. So, yeah, well, we, are, we are in a normal uh, working day. And uh, I, we, we prepare a lot of things for the Beijing model, so, but the delay, yeah, okay? Give, give us a lot of time to prepare more, more beautiful works, you know. And okay, yeah, uh, Lot of things, a lot of things, a lot of things changed, but sometimes bad, but something is positive for us. I think the world is like this, yeah. Yeah, for sure, very busy, um, and yeah. Uh, do, and do you have any advice, Shao, that you could perhaps share with um, designers that are based in in North America, in Europe, that are still in lockdown? Do you have any advice for how they can get through the current time at the moment? Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, also, uh, my team also working in the in UK, and also a uh, lot of designers at the same time like us before. I hope they, they can, uh, you know, had good 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 job in the in home, and also spend they will spend time with the family and. Uh, I can see uh, it's, it's good examples for them. When they work in home and start to scare, you, you, you really need to worry about your kid, blah, 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 to, to talk with you, and how to transport your design you know, to your boss with, with all this noise from your, your children. So it's a really difficult thing, you know. But sometimes it's really good for designers when they work in home, they have time to take care of your family. It's really better than before. So. 
I, I hope they can communicate with, with their boss. So now the big price for them because time already really hard. So please <laughs> make their lives a little easy during this time. Don't give them, them too many projects. Some enough, that's enough. When everything is going right, everything is going normal day, then we can work more hard than before. This I really strong so that they are, they are leaders, you know. Like let's seven laws be our guys. We we we, have, we know this situation is before, you know. Okay. Yeah, fantastic. And yeah, Simon, I guess uh, you can't wait to to see your family after after what was it, fourteen weeks? Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's nearly fifteen weeks. Um, I and mean, you started asking guys, well, what's his to do list? And Shao, what's your to do list? Um, I mean, out of out of the whole situation, um, keep the strengths of what we've discovered in this time. Um, get back to the personal contact again as well, but keep the strengths of the of the of the the digital world we've been working with. So fuse those together. I like what Shao was saying about you know let, let's give get people people who are relaxed design better. Help people to relax. Use the the, the equipment for everybody to, to help them relax or work more remotely. Give them, let them work from home for a specific period of a project. Um, it just change, change the rules a little bit. And so that's one of the things on my to-do list is the equipment for everybody that they can work from home more easily. Um, the second thing on my to-do list is, um, is actually to get back to Shanghai and meet up with Colin Phipps and Jonathan Disley and Guy Borgogna and go go-karting. Maybe maybe Shao will want to come as well because Jonathan found a new go karting car track, but I think Guy has a bit of a weight penalty on that one, right? So so we, we don't know how he'll do, but I think Shao and I will be pretty fast. Oh, we lost you. We can't hear you, Guy. No, I can't hear you. What you're saying? Damn, that's a shame. You guys need the weight penalty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll take that. No problem. We'll take the weight penalty. But I'm looking forward to getting back to Shanghai. Uh, seeing the crowd back there as well. We we get together quite often socially outside from work circles. And uh, yeah, um, hopefully soon. There we go. Perhaps we can uh, live stream the go-karting as well. I'm sure uh, oh, people will be interested to see that. <laughs> yeah, they'll be interested to see. Who's that Who's that, that chap at the back there? Guy. <laughs> okay, brilliant, guy. <laughs> oh, I'm getting so much trouble when we're karting next. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys, uh, for joining us. Uh, massive thanks to Guy, to Shao, and to Simon. Um, it's been a pleasure yeah. talking to you guys. Thank you for your insights. Um, just as well, um, if anyone's still uh, wondering, the live stream will be available online um, for people to check afterwards. So if your colleagues didn't manage to make it, um, do send them a link. Um, that will be on our website soon. Uh, yeah. And also, we have uh, many more live sessions coming up, um, some really interesting stuff uh, that we'll be discussing and, and showcasing on CDN. Um, so do check that out um, and be sure to come and join us for the next one. So thanks again, guys. It was a pleasure talking to you and uh, stay safe. Great. See you, everybody. Best wishes from Korea. Bye. Cheers, cheers. Thanks, everyone. I'm 70 da. I'm 70 da.